uh, under the leadership and mentorship of uh, the late and great Ngwame Nguruma, uh, the big debate that was in the chamber was whether we needed separate individual African states or we needed a, a unified uh, Africa. I remember, Honorable Speaker, uh, when I was in government, spending some hours with the late President Robert Mugabe. He was in Ghana at the time, and he was, a, he was invited as a guest to listen to the conflicting debates amongst the luminaries. There was one luminary, uh, there was one camp led by uh, President Guruma, and another led by President, the late and great Malim Julius Nyerere, uh, uh, which argued that we should remain as separate uh, countries, and another which said that uh, we needed to form uh, one country. <coughs> My respectful submission, Mr. Speaker, says that uh, we can't continue perpetuating the vestiges of the Berlin Conference of 1884 and remain little splintered uh, 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 countries despite our huge population of over a billion. To give actualization to the dream of Pan-Africanism, uh, Mr. Speaker, say we need to break the artificial boundaries that were created in Berlin by Otto van Bismarck and others in 1884 when they created these artificial uh, boundaries. That will then give power to the African, uh, uh, Pan-African Parliament. At the present moment, it is a talk shop because it doesn't have any policy or legislative uh, power-making uh, authority. It does not make anything that is binding uh, on the nation uh, state. And the simple and good reason, Mr. Speaker says that uh, African elites and African leaders have refused to let go of their national uh, authority. I submit, Mr. Speaker, that we should move for regional, uh, uh, total African uh, in integration, destruction of uh, those borders, destruction of the nation state in Africa as we know it uh, today. And this agenda is urgent for three reasons, uh, Mr. Speaker. One of them is the implosion of conflict on the African continent. As I'm talking to you right now, the biggest war is raging in northern Ethiopia, where the Ethiopian government is at war with the, the citizens of Tigray, and thousands and thousands of people are being displaced uh, across uh, the region. Uh, only last week, more than 24 people, uh, Ethiopian citizens, were found a dead in, in Zambia. Mm. Uh, previously, it was in, in Malawi because of the offshoot of the civil war that is raging uh, in, uh, in no, Ethiopia. It's, 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 there is a conflict the in the Horn of Africa, uh, Mr. Ratify, Speaker uh, said. There is a conflict in, in, in Somalia. Yes, sir. I'm, co I'm connected. Oh, it's it muted automatically. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there's a conflict in the Horn of Africa. Eritrea is, is unstable. Uh, uh, um, Somaliland, Mogadishu is, is caught up uh, with the, with the uh, terror terrorism. Uh, there's conflict in, in Somaliland, uh, Mr. Speaker say, which is trying to become an independent uh, state. There's conflict, vicious conflict in southern Sudan. Sometimes the peace holds, sometimes the peace doesn't hold. There's a conflict in Sudan itself, which has moved from a, a, a military dictatorship under Bashir to a, peop a people's revolution back to the uh, military again. There are coups uh, on the African continent. We've seen a coup in Benin. We've seen a coup in Mali. We've seen a coup in uh, Burkina Faso. There is civil disturbance in, 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 in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Mr. Speaker say. There is, uh, there is a, 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 a conflict in Cameroon where English-speaking citizens and Frank-speaking citizens are against the, the leadership of President Paul Bia, who is the second longest serving uh, president in, in, in Africa uh, after um, uh, 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 the president of Equatorial uh, Guinea, who just won an election by 93% a few months uh, ago. There is a conflict in Central Africa, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, particularly in Eastern uh, DRC. And Eastern DRC, Mr. Speaker, illustrates my point of these artificial boundaries. Eastern DRC 
they speak the same language between those that are found in, 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 in Rwanda. So Rwanda, the city is called Goma, in the DRC is called Gisenyi, but it's one city separated by a river. If you go to, so, so the conflict is taking place amongst people who speak the same language. If you go to Rwanda, there is underlying conflict between the Hutu and the Tutsis. There are people who speak the same language. If you go to, uh, if you go to, uh, to, to, to Burundi, underlying conflict between people who speak the same language, uh, Kenya Rwanda, the Hutus and the Tutsis. If you go to the Central African Republic, there's, not, there's nothing Republican about the Central African uh, Republic. It's a state permanently in conflict since the days of uh, Embara, John Bertrand, uh, uh, Bokasa. If you go to, to Togo, same conflict, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. If you come into our region, there is a, a conflict in the Democratic uh, Republic of uh, Mozambique arising out of uh, terrorism in, in northern, uh, uh, in northern uh, Mozambique. So the war of sub-Saharan Africa, Mr. Speaker, is battling under the scourge of war, civil war, or a coups. Which means, Mr. Speaker, we must um, empower the continental bodies, the African uh, Union and the African Parliament. But this can only be done if we discard our, uh, our national little uh, uh, flags and uh, national anthems which were imposed by Bismarck and others in Berlin in 1884. The second reason, Mr. Speaker, is, is economics. We have a population of more than a billion. By 2045, this population will double. But we are not reaping the economies of scale that come out of a huge population. We have the same population as China, but China is reaping the economies of scale that comes out of a huge population. The scientists call it the demographic dividend because we are not uh, integrated. So I submit, Mr. Chairman, that we need to form a, a customs Mr. union. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Yeah. We're not chairman. Oh, sorry, Mr. I downgraded you. Thousands of apologies. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I submit that the, the idea of the African continental free trade area, which was signed by African heads of state in March of 2021, must be actualized so that it becomes a full bodied customs union. We remove trade barriers, we remove uh, passports, we remove uh, borders, but that also must apply uh, to, uh, to uh, the political uh, uh, borders. So we need regional integration, proper regional integration, so that we can harvest the, do the demographic dividend so that we can harvest the huge population of a, of, a, of a billion people. Zimbabwe has got an effective market of less than 2 million. There are less than 500,000 people who can, with actual domestic demand, aggregate demand, that can support an economy. If we were to integrate a SADC alone, Zimbabwe would have suddenly have a market of 300,000. If we were to integrate on the African continent, that's a market of a billion, a, a billion people. Think of what benefits our farmers would derive. Think of what benefit our miners would derive. Think of what benefit our manufacturers uh, would de derive. 65% of our, of our economy is, is informalized. Uh, and, and I'm referring to the recent uh, World Bank notes produced in September of 2022. That informal sector, I want to give an example of Glenview. If you go to Glenview, Mr. Speaker say, you will find the latest couch being made under the tree in Glenview. Can you imagine if those people had the market in Mozambique, had the market in Burundi, had the market in Kisangani, in Zaire, had the market in Mogadishu, had the market debate. in Zanzibar, it would transform uh, this debate. economy. So the Good issue debate. of establishing one free Africa should be seen from the as the ultimate the developmental Sarah. agenda, as the ultimate <coughs> transformational agenda. My good friend, Mr. Soda Jemu, the esteemed the Minister honorable, of Energy, honorable. the Honorable Jemu, is struggling. Zimbabwe has got installed capacity of energy of 2,000 megawatts, but any, at any given <coughs> time, less than 600 megawatts are being produced. <coughs> In the Democratic Republic of Congo, on the Congo River, there is the Inga, a gorge, 
which is capable of producing 40,000 megawatts of energy, enough to light the whole of Africa and export to Southern Europe, to Spain, uh, which lost the World Cup in Portugal, which lost the World Cup <laughs> in Italy, which never made it to the World Cup. Just the Inga alone, uh, 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 Mr. Speaker. And so it pains me that, uh, it pains me that uh, the World Bank and others have not provided finance to Inga because they know the liberation effect that Inga will have on the ordinary Wanandji on the African uh, uh, continent, uh, Mr. Speaker. So we have lost 40 decades of independence, 50 decades of independence, pretending to run countries when we are running into little tin pot countries. Mr. Speaker, I would rather own 10% of an elephant than 100% of a red. Our small countries are little reds. Let's come and form this giant uh, called Africa. It pains me, Mr. Speaker, say, if you want to go to Francophone Africa in particular, if I want to go to Tunisia, I have to go to Charles de Gaulle Airport first and then come down. There is no direct flight. I will not find a direct flight from here to Mali, from here to Dakar, Senegal, from here to Togo because of the old colonial infrastructure. Even here in Sub-Saharan Africa, here in Southern Africa, it will cost me 800 US dollars to Cape Town. But I can buy a ticket to London for 400 US dollars because of the colonial vestiges, Mr. Speaker. I submit, Mr. Speaker, look at all my landed friends. They are putting on ties. They, they can't put on an African dress like myself because the colonization is in the mindset. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, including yourself. <laughs> <laughs> The only exception is my uh, father-in-law, Honorable Jefferson. <laughs> so even our dress, Mr. Speaker, we ought to have our own dress. Even our language, Mr. Speaker, we ought to be pontificating in Esizuru, in, in, in Chiswahili, Mr. Speaker. We are not able to do that. So yes, we support this, uh, this uh, motion, Mr. Speaker, but it must raise uh, deeper issues about our omissions as a generation that has failed to unite Africa and to bring Africa together. I thank you very much. Well done. A good debate. A good debate. Uh